to the platform. Kule Ido is a filmmaker, actor, digital content expert, creator of the Frank Dunga comedy series and a mobile content maker. He rose to fame through the interview and in Danny TV web series about an unassuming job seeker for which he was nominated for Best Actor in a Comedy in Africa Magic Viewers Choice Award in 2015. He has also gone on to feature in several movies like The Wedding Party and its sequel The Wedding Party 2 previously working as a journalist, but currently as a photographer and a filmmaker. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Kule Ido. My mind they call to <laughs> who do this video? <laughs> when is it showing in cinema? <laughs> see head. I just say panic not gonna make me drop microphone. <sighs> it is where Abuja. Yeah. It's good to be here again. think of Abuja, we think of money, <laughs> connection, well-fed people, designer outfits, everybody looking good and relaxed, no stress, nobody's in a hurry to go anywhere. <laughs> traffic, is this on traffic? Think of power, every form of power. Let me behave. I want to say something that will cause a lot for me. Because this is Abuja. And therefore, stand on all existing mandate, my um, protocol. <laughs> protocol, protocol, protocol. I never spent 30 minutes at Bego. Mm -hmm. It is Lagos, then I know where to hide and dodge you, please. <clears throat> stand on all existing protocols. Sir, I've stood on protocol, so I don't need to mention him. Is that what it means, sir? Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for this opportunity to come. It's my pleasure to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for yourselves. Uh, uh -huh. Don't worry, I won't take time. I won't take time. Go straight to the point and wrap it up. Especially, you know, for some of us that are traveling out. No, not some of us. You know, where I be? Who waiting? Uh, I get passport. Talk less up. You know, some of us are traveling out. You know, so. Okay. Don't worry, I got you. I know some of you. Your mind is already at the airport too. To other destinations. I didn't see it. Pastor said it. You know what? <laughs> now that I said it. It's all good, it's all good, it's all good. So in like three sentences, I'll be done. Um, they said I should speak on focus on your focus. Whatever that means, you know. Slide one, focus on your focus. It is what it is. Uh, DJ, uh, sorry. That's um, controls center. Technical, yeah. Technical team, slide two. Now, how do we start? You know, content creation, creativity. How do we start? Very easy. You will not believe it. Just start. <laughs> and next slide. You already know what to do. Thank you very much. <laughs> Put your hands together for yourselves. <laughs> How many people get hand? How many people they clap? You know balance. <laughs> so you said, how do we start? It's start. What else do you want to know? How else, how else do you want to start? Okay, you still want me to break it down. The um, technical team. Let's see if there's any other thing. Eh, we don't already talk up now. What else? Any other thing? 
Ah, uh, my editor not sneaking ideas. Okay. Let's make it very brief. I think I have an hour or less in case there are questions. So, content creation, how do you get the ball rolling? How do you uh, set things in motion? I've been doing this for as long as I can remember. Way back in school, I used to make comics because I was an illustrator. You make comics in secondary school. Before then, I doodled all over my school notes and textbooks. I'm not encouraging. We all grown up, so if you like, doodle on your passport. Nice, Abby. <laughs> so anyway, I used to doodle on my school notes. My parents would complain. My mother especially, what's all these things? My father kind of appreciated it, but he like, buy a drawing book, you know. But then it started from there, made comics in school. And then I, that sharpened my interest. Of course, I loved cartoons when I was young, you know, Danger Mouth. Or, ah, man, I begin to expose age now. No, not the old ones, the younger ones, they'll feel left out. We younger ones might feel left out. People like us. Sir, when did I do my 18th birthday? How about now? <laughs> Roger Ramjet. Atomant. <laughs> I won't point fingers, but some people are lost on one side of the hall. Or some people in some other side of the hall. Just op yeah, opening seats. They can't remember the good days. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's equalize everything. Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Uh, Lion King. <laughs> that was how I started, you know. I had interest in music, too. Started with the um, Small Woods Piano Tutor, took piano lessons, went on from there, joined the church choir, played the lead guitar, the bass, and the keyboard, went on there to write songs, rapped a bit in school, joined an a cappella team, or the best a cappella team on campus then, was a music director uh, all throughout my university days, then picked up animation, self taught animator, 2D animation particularly, went on from there. Of course, after studying agricultural sciences for first degree, came back from NYSC and dived into animal genetics for master's degree. Came out from that and then applied, doubled around, messed around on the internet for job opportunities. Like most of us will probably do after university or any kind of training, looking for opportunities. And I kind of did that for a while. And my dad said, if you want to want to do anything master's, you better do it now before you grow older than now because it might get tougher. So I listened to his advice and went for animal genetics and got master's degree in animal genetics. Just as I was running up the animal genetics course, uh, dabbling around, don't forget the dabbling part. There's nothing wrong in dabbling. Dabble, you want to dabble. Dab dabbling is healthy. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. You know. I know, I know, I know. If any um, focus, you know, we're talking about focus. And back in the day, you know, <laughs> motivational speaking, you know, would help led us in that path a lot, you know. Purpose. You have to align yourself with your purpose in life. That is good. It's all good. There's nothing wrong with purpose. But some of our Purposes. Some of us have purpose that our purpose in life is to dabble into everything I want to dabble to. You are a dabbler. It's better than being a gambler. Hmm? But I did, you know, I was a dabbler, full time dabbler. Dabbled into everything. I'm surprised I actually went to school because one time I wanted to be an architect because I could draw. I thought that was my path in life. My father called, encouraged me. My parents encouraged me. Hey, it's good, it's good. I'm sure my dad was probably thinking, he will soon change his watch now, count to three. I think I'll be an artist, I cannot tell you. Because, you know, my comics were banging on campus. You know? I was doing cartoons. We had, some of my friends were more in the still life illustration thing. I was more on the cartoon side of the scale, you know. My head could comprehend, you know, a lot of slapstick humor. Maybe inspired by the numerous cartoons I used to watch, you know. And then after that, I wanted to be a pilot. Yeah, I mean, it's like, man, I'm going to be a pilot. And my father said, oh, yeah, that's a good thing. Know your geography and know your physics. He knew, he knew math was my enemy, so I, I, they don't get me. They don't get me. I struggle with math a bit. I was surprised that I passed further math more than math. I'm like, what kind of remind me of my I was passing further math more than math. I said, this is not my journey. Then I said, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be a wildlife photographer. Because I like photography. No thanks to Nat National Geographic. Nat Geo Wild did a thing to me, to my brains. I said, this is my calling. Then I discovered I loved animals. I said, yes, this is still my calling. I'm going to study it in school, but let me go for the best if I'm going to study anything. So I went for vet medicine. Of course, you know, uh, that didn't happen. Then I said, agriculture looks like my thing. I went for agriculture. So I was a dabbler. And that continued after school. I dabbled into everything I could dabble to. Music, art, everything, everything. Not knowing that it was just first stops on my journey to where I was actually going. Guess what? Am I there? No, I'm still dabbling. So in case you are still dabbling, calm down. We are together. 
we shall double till we double no more. Somebody <laughs> tagged me on Twitter yesterday and said, would you respect, sir, what exactly do you do for a living? Ooh. I said, well, interesting question, sir. Yeah? If you must know, I solve problems. And he said, oh, okay. I don't hide on that one. Yeah? Learn big grandma, oh, it can save you. <laughs> Thank you, sir, for that nice uh, commendation on the comedy sketches, numerous comedy sketches I've dabbled into. Uh, one of them was my, was my uh, interest in employment, you know, job opportunities. Because why? Because I noticed a lot of young people didn't get their dream jobs. Not because they weren't good enough. Not because they didn't get the right grades in school. Yeah, some of us didn't get, but, you know, whatever. But it was more because uh, the equivalent of stage fright. You know, like, I call somebody randomly now. I like bros that's looking at me. And I just call you to join me on stage and speak for, like, 60 seconds. Or maybe this sister. So we're already sweating at the possibility. It's easy to just sit there, eh? You know, some people, everybody gets stage fright, so don't let the comfortable looking gentleman and lady sitting down here, hey, it's okay. Double into stage fright and double out of it. That's the thing. Anything you double into that's not good enough, always find a way to double out of it. Anyway, I digress. So, okay, let me skip all that. Juicy gist. I know you like gist, but let's do something you enjoy. That's why I went along that rambling route. I enjoyed a lot of things. I dabbled into them. So you want to start content creation? How exactly do you start? How do you focus on what you're doing? You know, do something you enjoy. You like to cook. You probably want to do content in the direction of cooking. You'll be shocked. You think it's easy for you. Oh, you think you can cook. Oh, wait, you think they can cook. Wait till you see somebody struggle to make pap. How many people cook here? You can cook in your dreams. You know you're a cookist. <laughs> like, you are good. Is there a cafeteria around here, sir? Like a kitchen, kitchenette, sir? Like we can warm tea. Right? Hot water. Very good. I, you get why? How many people can make pap anywhere, anytime, anyhow? <laughs> Some people are not sure. They don't raise hand for cook. <laughs> Their mind they call to raise hand for pap. If <laughs> say no be pap, pap. <sighs> can't remember the last time you tried to make pap. The pap pap you. <laughs> By the time you are done, you are not sure whether to drink the pap or to eat it. <laughs> last last, you boil the pap, <laughs> cook the pap, roast the pap, anything but making the pap. So if that's your thing, I mean, look, content can be made about virtually anything. I can make a content about how people laugh. Recently, I saw a tweet. One platform gathered people that had the weirdest laughs, gathered them together. And people watched it like, uh-uh. They are laughing. Oh, they were cracking them up. And they were like, this unique laughter. And people were like, ah! Ah! like, Yes, you can't, you can't see people laugh. You would. <laughs> Content can be about virtually anything, trust me. The information superhighway now that we have to 5G and all the likes, technologies, bam, in our face. I remember when I was in school, I'm 98 there about. Phones were fantasies. Like, we only saw them in movies. There was nothing like video calling. You know, video call nothing, nobody. We'd be say back in the day to speak to our cousins in America. They would bath on a Saturday, wear fine clothes, rub powder. Come by here, then they will carry us to Nightel to go and queue to make phone call. Man, Gen Z's don't know what they're getting now. You better use it well, though. Use it. You've had a man of stuff. You now use it well, though. Just remember that was the day when people had to go and queue at Nightel to call their cousins or their parents abroad. Imagine, just imagine it. Just to say hello, good morning. You bath, wear clothes, and go to Nightel to queue up. And then, grand ground. You can't see the face, so. Not only the voice. If the voice no do you, go back home. But now, virtually on your phone, you can call anywhere in the world. Very soon. I don't know what Elon Musk is planning. You'll probably be able to call your friend when he goes to Mars or goes to the orbit. I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath on that. It's probably going to be possible very soon. So look for something you're naturally comfortable with. Why? Because the content creation journey can be pretty rough. It can Oh, yes, it can be pretty rough. It can be demanding. Uh, you have to be prepared for it. It has to be something you naturally enjoy. Because content itself is not... 
an end. It's a means to an end. It's part of communication. You are communicating with people. And that's why, because, you know, I discovered that people most times had interview frights. The equivalent of stage fright that I was explaining the other time. For, uh, first class, 2-1, good grace, 2-2. Two, two. Even third class is not mean. Once you get that invitation to come to an interview, problem don't start. Baba go borrow every G, G, G maths textbook at time. You know, cram everything, revise his old school notes, only to get the job interview, and it is empty. As empty as anything. Sweating profusely. With maximum AC. Sweating. I've been there. We've all been there at a point in time. Oh, okay, you feel like it because you, you aced your job interview. Okay, remember that time you went for American visa interview? Yeah, I don't even know. That one, I die. That's what you want humbles a lot of people. Yeah. You get there, and uh, no matter where you are. That thing, can, it's an equalizer. Oh. No, I've seen all sorts of people at the American embassy. Everybody used to sweat. <laughs> like, the bigger the suit, the more the sweat. <laughs> oh, boy. I remember the last time, one of those last times I went for American visa interview. I mean, in real life, not on screen. I not even dress well. <laughs> so that I won't be too disappointed. So I can blame something for the refuser. <laughs> Man, in this generation, we have a lot to learn to catch up on mental health management. Now, me manage my mental health myself. <laughs> I just dress anyhow. In case they don't give me, I say, now my dressing. <laughs> oh, boy. I go anyhow. The moment I heard. So you're a student? They say, yes, sir. Do you have an proof that you register for the next semester in school? I said, I said, no, you don't get it. I just finished final year paper. I'm waiting for NYC. The guy said, and what? I said, NYC is something we do like for one year when we finish school. Room about them. <laughs> um, I will never forget that man. Caucasian, white, chubby, bearded. He just looked up at me and said, so you're currently an unemployed graduate? As I heard that one, I just saw my visa flying in the sky. RIP. I look the visa, it go past me. My visa flashed before my eyes. I said, Baba, hold up. I just have one request. He said, no. I said, I beg you, let me go and apply. I'll come back. He said, so, no, sir. I just said, down. I reached as I said, if you see I wear a suit, forgive me. <laughs> so, yes, job interviews. I've seen the people lose it at job interviews, you know, crumble up, well prepared. So I felt, you know what? People don't make the best impression. And I was so concerned about it because then I had gotten a job as a, as a, as a broadcast journalist in Lagos. Yeah, even, so, even though I studied agriculture like sciences. But don't forget, that's why I said the long story. That long story was not for g -Seco. I started from, so my background in media had been prepared by God himself without me really necessarily knowing it. So you're on a journey. Whatever you're going through right now, there are pieces in the big puzzle of your life. You don't throw them away, you know. They are going to matter. You may not know how or know when, but trust me. There's somebody up there. As long as you're connected, though, you know, be on his Wi-Fi. Nobody see just the room about anyhow. Church, you escape. Nice VG, you escape. Evangelism, you escape. Morning devotion, you escape. Escape. Calm down. Where are you escaping to? Yeah. Connect to the Wi-Fi. You know what I'm saying, sir? Connect the Wi-Fi. Download when you need to download on time. And I mean download. I'm serious about the resources. Ultimately, every masterpiece idea that's going to revolutionize their life is going to come from the father of light himself. Trust me. You see, there's no... You see, the more I went into genetics, the more I realized, now nah, I'm more free, man. Don't you tell me, say, this TGCA in the DNA, in the helical structure of the... You know, the genom genomic theory and recombinant DNA. I'm more, somebody create this thing, man. Man. One day I looked at my, supervisor, my professor in class. Look, just one alphabet missing on the... The, the, the DNA helix structure, the helical structure. One just, if it is um, guamine, amine, all the amino acids, just T, C, G, G, A, A, A. If it's T, C, G, 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 A, that person's in trouble. Leg figure out of the air. If you didn't see with your nose, anything can happen. Anything is allowed. They call it congenital abnormality. <laughs> see, even the grammar big. You copy. So I'm mean, ah. So the chance that you are alive right now and you are the way you are, just be grateful. <laughs> be grateful. Be grateful. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> you pass through all that journey from fertilization to sitting down here, thinking I am. No, not beans. I appreciate God. <laughs>
So the more I studied, I said, man. Anyway, back to the matter. So you need to download. Inspiration ideas, I believe, come from God. Uh, how do you get it? And in various ways. Naturally, you can be gifted it from birth. Some, it happens like that to some people. They don't know how. And that's why there's a difference between gifts, talents, and skills. That's a topic for another seminar. Let's not go there. So some people are gifted from birth. Um, if you are, great. So you, can, you can work on certain things. If you don't have the gift, if you don't have the talent, rather, you might develop the skill. Sometimes you have the gift, you don't know it, so you never use it and never benefit from it. Right? So gifts can be anything from singing to art um, to dancing. I can dance in me. Ah, something where we see for TikTok. Try them now. No, it's not because you are old in your 50s, 40s, or th late 30s that your back is stiff. Even if at 12, some people cannot bear it. They can't move leg. To praise God in church, thank God for two by two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not everybody feel come on level. Ra ba ba, ra ba ba, ra ba ba. Not be everybody. That's why that, you can always be safe. Whether your clap is on beat or off beat, nobody care. God bless the choir. Anytime, they cover us. <laughs> So what am I saying? So make what you can create content around just about anything. You can write, you can sing, you may be dancing, you may be teaching. Because essentially, don't forget what content creation is. It's just a means to an end. It's you communicating with an audience. Who your audience will be now, I don't know. My time, because I just realized if I wrote a book about 10 steps to getting your dream job, if you bookshop now, 20 ways to secure your goal, you hey, yeah, more, they don't do them. Nobody go read my own. Why be? I was fresh from school, working in broadcast journalism. Of course, as a broadcast journalist, I saw a lot. So we did some reports on, on, employ on unemployment. Then we realized a lot of HR people were talking about the unemployability of Nigeria. You say, ah, ah, too tight. Which one be that? Unemployability. It speaks to the fact that some people are just not too suitable. They're not attractive for employers to pick up and pay good money. And that's where value has to come in. So now it's not essentially that they are not useful in an organization. It's just because they don't make a good presentation of themselves at job interviews. The same way I didn't present myself where at American Embassy visa application interview that time. If you've ever gotten a visa to any Western country, leading country in the world, you realize the more qualified you are for that visa, the less interested you are. Let me repeat that. See, the people they give visa are people that if they don't go, you cannot pin them. In fact, let me tell you, actually people that going, some, going, to, going that, to that place gone is a disturbance for them. Should I go deeper? Okay. Person they make like 1.5 million naira a month, let's just say. 1.5. He's been working for about 15 years. Has assets. Account is very arrogant. You know? He's gone for like 18 conferences around the world. He has just two weeks vacation. And he's out of the two weeks vacation. He's the top manager, top of his career, you know. He's been practicing for like 17 years, you know, 15 real employment in top organizations. And he wants to come to your country for a five days vacation. No, if you are visa, we're not attached to him. No, if you be visa yourself. No, so I digress. You see, say the thing they pay me. That's why I do skits around interview. That's why I started from it. They pay me. It they pay me gone. You know, all these things, I say, I can't lie to you, man. That's what I say. Okay, what do you do for a living? I'm a professional, man. I'm a professional. I say, what do you mean by a professional? Like, anything you ask us to do now, we do it. That's all. <laughs> I thought it was a joke until somebody tweeted at me a few years back and said, Baba, please help, help your boy. I need it. I, anything, please, Baba, help me. I said, okay, fine, no problem. What can you do? It came to my DM. Baba, we can, we can do anything for you, sir. <laughs> so that sounds like an assassin or an arm robber. Which one is we can do anything? I said, so, but what can you do? What skill set do you have? He said, anything, sir. We can make anything happen. Ah, Obeni, unfollow me now. He said, don't threaten me with your ability. Which one is we can do everything? Ah, don't do anything. I was asking for your skill set. He never responded after that. I'm like, what? You can't, what can you do? You need help. You need a job. What can you do? I can draw. Fine. Okay. Okay. Have you, can you use software to draw like Adobe Illustrator? Can you do graphics design? I can sew. Beautiful. Can you make dresses, tops? Okay, why? We can look for something what we can do together or commission you to do. Nah. 
Look, forget skill. Shabby, you the bath in every morning. You know how to clean your body. Can you clean the floor? Sir, I can clean, I can wash. Or I can cook. She can He said, we can do everything. I am a I, I killer. Which one is going to do everything? No. Anyways, so that's it. Make a plan, make a plan, make a plan. I can't emphasize this place. People don't make plans. Countries don't make, and I'm not calling, I'm not calling name now. Countries don't make plans. We just wake up in the morning. Take, <coughs> take power. Like, empower yourself. That's what I mean. And then, then <coughs> when you empower yourself, <sighs> let's just go to the next part. <laughs> no, slow down. <laughs> they say, I should... <coughs> you know, but, no, but it's just plan. Just, for God's sake, just plan. Because lives are dependent on it. Just plan for God's sake. Sir, I'm talking to you, sir. Plan. Uh, have a plan. Who do you want to work with? Plan. Is that much to ask for? Is that too much? How do you want to make it happen? Plan it. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you want to make it like a cabinet wardrobe, kitchen, cupboard, make it and make it good. I know where you're going to make it, who's going to supply the wood, who's going to do the, the polishing, where you're going to display it, where wind will blow it, where it's going to dry where. No. Don't just ghost, you know, like, you know, don't just, uh, like, you understand? Like, maybe customer care, things like that. Relate with your customer on a regular basis. Sorry, oh, there's a delay. Oh, this is what we are doing. They're bringing it to oh, a hook for Tom Milan Bridge. Oh, there's traffic new. Oh, we are working on it. Oh, then if there's problem, send back, dispatch bike. Let them go and meet it. And the one they can carry, they carry from traffic. So at least your customer will know you are doing something. You know, so, so like I was saying, uh, sorry, let me move away from that side. You understand? Know you know I'm still a young man. And that's his thing. I'm still trying to make it in life. So no, you will compare yourself with some people who have good backing. Let me stay on this side with you, my brother and my sister. So anyway, my time is running out. I have like four minutes left. So you know, you need whatever resources you need, time, money, people, who do you need? Sometimes you don't need a crowd. You need just one person. Start. There's so many ideas in my head. I thought so big. I never started. And to go scale it down. Call one person. Can we just do this? Proof of concept. Can we shoot this just for a trial? Start it. Just get it out. Because... Nobody's going to fund anything they can't see any visual representation of. And that's I'm happy you are mentioning visual, visual storytelling and visual. There was, that, was that what you said? Yeah, imagery. Kelly Chamadi will be one said, fantastic photographer, Nigerian photographer. He said, Nigeria doesn't have an image problem. We have an imagery problem. Google Nigeria. Look at the pictures that will come out. Google Abuja. Flat, uninteresting pictures. For the most, now we're just trying small, small. Ah, yes, you see that city gates. Even me, I recorded even when I was coming. I don't post them for Instagram. Abuja, what's up? That's up. You know? Yeah. I'll go to the like California, Hollywood. That Hollywood logo alone, anywhere you see it, the more you cut respect. I was there once. Saw the. Say, oh, more now, wow. And hardly any place from, from, uh, from Beverly Hills down all the way to Universal Studios. Fantastic scenery. Why Nigerian musicians go to shoot music video for South Africa? Have you been to South Africa? Oh, more. They planned that city, die. They shoot American movies in. In South Africa, in, 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 in Cape Town, there's a bridge that leads to nowhere in Cape Town. They started constructing bridge. They didn't plan. The bridge could not be finished, so it stopped midway. So if you drive that night, you're falling. So what did they do? They closed the bridge that nobody can use it. And somebody said, you're wasting this long stretch of bridge that leads to nowhere. Let's be shooting films there. So when they want to shoot car chases on bridges, they use South Africa. My friend went there the last time on honeymoon with his wife. He said, oh boy, you see what's in the city? He said, I just reached South Africa. I see Cape Town now. The whole street, NYPD cars are like, what's going on? Baby, did you miss the plane and land in New York? I had to check again. Sorry, where is this? They said it's in South Africa, Cape Town. Uh -uh. They said, apparently they are shooting NYPD scene, a movie, a scene in NYPD movie. They said, well, NYPD and police cars. Why? The buildings there look almost identical to some areas in New York. You know how much they are generating? I want to shot a commercial in South Africa. Oh, more. Forget it. It's a whole industry. A whole industry. Oh, let's not talk about that one. I don't want to cry. My tissue paper is not here. Plan, no, for God's sake. Anybody here can be leader tomorrow. Shall I plan? I won't say more than that. Two minutes to go. Planning is important. What do I need? When do I start? When do I stop? How much do I do? How much time do I need for this? You know, uh, that's just plan. Make a plan. So what, what happened? I covered. Any question? Any part? Is it a, are we allowed to ask questions now or later or something? If you, yes, ma'am. Real quick. Okay, thank you. 
You know, sorry, I had to take the question because it was more practical than, you know, just me talking. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon. Yes, sir. Please, I'd like to know how um, you're just coming to the industry then. You're able to get a... L <coughs> Bless you. I'm sorry. It's fine. You're able to get a large platform like in Daniel TV. You know, that was how a lot of us knew you. Yeah. So how can a young creative just trying to get into the industry get um, brands... I don't, I don't know just have my question. Yeah, I do. I know where you're going with your question. Yeah. How are you able to get that kind so, of so, connection? So, yeah. That, that's why I started with the first point. Do what you like. Don't start off looking for brands. Nah. All these kids have done. No, I never... See, I have content I'm creating agriculture now. Don't, that's why I told you. Because I want things to connect later. Some things I said today may not make sense to you. Later when you hear about me, you're not like, no wonder. I'm shooting some agricultural content right now. I'm going all over Nigeria discussing with farmers and agro You know, fantastic, beautiful drone shots, fast-moving cars. I'm shooting, like, Top Gear. You know that Top Gear car review thing? Like, that kind of quality about agriculture. stuck to the skin or the, the hide of an animal, usually large ruminants, horses, cattle, you put the logo on them. So there has to be something to brand. So I'll say keep your eyes less on. When you get to that bridge, you cross it. Just create a fantastic content that you can be proud of. Any other question? Yes, sir. Yeah. My time is red. I don't know what that Okay, uh, so this morning, uh, myself and a couple of brothers were having a review of uh, the topics we discussed yesterday and all of that. Then a statement came up. Uh, how can we achieve all of this with age? You know, so there's a tendency for people to feel that, hey, I'm too old to do this. I feel I don't have enough time for all of this. So how do you even get beyond that mental barrier and just do, do whatever it is you have to do? Yeah, thank you very much. I'm happy that question came up because, again, you see, because we are, this vehicle that we were talking about, two of the most important technological items in content creation, devices and the internet, are heavily dominated by a certain age group. They call them Gen Zs, you know, or millennials, you know, in some cases. So usually 30, 30 downward. So if you are not within that age bracket, you might feel disadvantaged or it's too late or I spend too much time. <laughs> okay, there's this man. On Instagram, I used to follow. I followed him more. He's not my age mate. Baba Gidi, real Agba Lagba, Agba Lagbi. Why was I following him? That guy is a fashion genius. He combines suits and shirts and sho shoes the most amazing way. Feldoras, derbies, scarves, pocket squares. Color combination is out of this world. Old man, he doesn't talk. Just, and he has this gray beard. My God, he looks fantastic at his age. Can a 15-year-old do that? No matter how you dress as a 20-year-old, I would still think you are dressing 20-year-old. Even if you dress like that man, you don't look, but that man, Kai, good hairline, unlike some of us. <laughs> we have embraced our destiny, sir. You can't harass us. You know, solid beard, looking dapper, white beard. Imagine somebody in his late 60s or early 70s, full gray beard, sunshade, tight suit, nice tight pants, good loafers. I said, ah, kilo day, slow down, grandpa. Grandpa no grill. Then he started making videos. Cufflinks, like, ah, kilo day, too much sauce. That's his content. He's always liked fashion. In his time, there was no internet. He has missed this in life. No, he didn't miss it. He can still dive in. <laughs> Another beautiful thing. Even if you're in your 50s, imagine a 50-year-old. See, if I were to work with someone like that, like someone like you now, just fit you up. Let's say you like food, you love to cook, or you're a chef, and you feel I'm too old. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't spoil your market. You know, I'm just saying. You know, I'll just probably do you up, maybe gray your beard a bit, a little bit more, give you some attitude, you know, and then some nice fitting, not oversized that Boba is going this way, Taza is going the other way. You know, look nice, you know, put some class, you know, age like fine wine class. And you know, cook. People will listen to you. Why? This looks like this man looks like he's been around for long enough to know what he's talking about. 
That's why a lot of the faces on TV before now used to be very elderly guys because there's a kind of credibility that comes with whatever they say. This guy cannot be lying to us on TV. You understand? There are certain things that that age can come an advantage. It's easier to listen to someone who you think is much older than you take a master class because you feel they know what they're talking about. That's why a lot of people, even young motivational speakers, they're not that old. One small gray hair go like this, they nurture it. Because that gray hair, now they are selling points. The purpose of a man trying to achieve his aims. And you see gray hair. Hmm. Hmm. Person like me now, we don't even get it. I just come. The purpose of a man. I'm going to talk your team, make this baba talk better. There's a way you even look. I made this bros now. We get dreadlock. I've been getting dreadlock before, but God said no. <laughs> Masi said no. Dreadlock now. This is African. I said, as an artist in New York, I said, hey, hey, these are the people we are talking about. I have a friend of mine, Laulu, and that guy that did the body arts for Beyonce. We used to be doing get Lagos together, hustling. <laughs> Laulu went to New York one year. Beyonce called him, Starbucks called him, Belvedere Perfume call, uh, called him. And no, it's a better a perfume. No, no, that's I think I can't remember what the brand is now. Anyway, what am I trying to say? Oh my Allah, lose dread now if you see him. I say, nah, you gotta look like artists. He, he had good hairline before, so he grew his hair into locks. So when he's wearing a suit with African art prints, imagine like that. Black guy, African art print with dreadlock that he molded like nah, marketing. He's probably gonna look okay, yeah, art, artist, you know, not artist, artist. You get as age and look matter and all those and let's leave that one for that. Any other question before I take my seat? You guys have been amazing. Put your hands together for yourself.